right, well, uh, my, well, my name is Cody Simon, and I'm studying plastic surgery. And I'm a wrestler here at Frisco High School, and wrestling is pretty much all my life. And I've been doing it since I've been in seventh grade. And it's been a real challenge for me. It's definitely taught me a lot of dedication and has definitely boosted my confidence up, which has been a big help through middle school and stuff like that. And my family's always been there. It's been a big help for them too. Um, I have three sisters and they are five, six, and seven. And they are crazy, so we'll leave that there. And so we start into the plastic surgery. And some of my experiences have been very hard and new, but have also taught me a lot. Like cold calls were very difficult. Like I didn't know how to perceive the people. I didn't know how to read their gestures and read their facial expressions. It was very difficult for me to actually get to talk to some people. But in the end, it kind of all worked out. I got to meet with a lot of the secretaries, and the secretaries were real nice about everything. But whenever you go into the medical field, you're always dealing with all their secretaries, which is not always the greatest, but it definitely is better because sometimes they're a little bit nicer than the actual doctors. And some of the interviews were difficult to get started, but once they started going, it was basically just kind of like a natural flow of things. And it was asking questions back and forth and kind of helped seeing that since they were doctors, they were obviously pretty intelligent, so you could uphold an intelligent conversation with them. And you had to basically create a at least a little bit of professionalism in there so you don't seem like you're just going in no experience having no knowledge of what you're talking about so that definitely has helped out a lot too and throughout the process I've kind of run into a lot of research problems just because strictly there's not a lot of things you can do when you're researching plastic surgery it's basically you get the broad subject of everything. There's no details that you can really research. There's not a lot of things that you can get that you wouldn't get in medical school that you need to go to that for. And so that has been a very difficult part as well. And also, it's been hard because all of this research that I've done has mainly been stories of plastic surgeons. It's never really been facts and statistics. And there's been very few but it's also very opinionated things as well. It's more about their mission trips, and it's about the aspect of plastic surgery, not about the actual plastic surgery. And through all of this, I've come up with a mentor, which is uh, Dr. Naveen Seti, and that was a difficult process as well, seeing that it was kind of on a time crunch and kind of had to pick in between a couple of them and had to call them and go through their secretary multiple times and I think it took about seven calls before I actually got to talk to the actual doctor and he was pretty cool about it. He was saying that, oh yeah, I'd love to be a mentor, I'd love to help you out. And so that's where that all started. And also when it comes to, with the professionalism and having a mentor comes actually making professional emails and where people are so used to texting and the emojis and smiley faces and all that stuff and you can't put any of that in an email. It's all have to be very well composed. It has to be very well written. You have to sound like you actually are intelligent when you are writing an email. And the purpose that I did for doing plastic surgery was mainly, there's three things. There's the three C's that I kind of came up with was confidence, changing a person and creating stability, which they all kind of go hand in hand. But those were the main three, because when you create the confidence, it like, you change the outlook of a person that they have for themselves. And when you do that, you can create stability in their life. And if like you have the confidence and you have the positive perspective, everything just kind of raises the person up and it helps them. And that's what I think plastic surgery is all about. It's not about making yourself look better or enhancing parts of yourself. It's about your confidence. It's about changing the person. And that's what I really like about it. And some of the learning that I actually have done, which is kind of broad, but there's just the two different spectrums of plastic surgery. There's the cosmetic and the reconstructive. And when it comes to both, 
a plastic surgeon does everything. They don't just do cosmetic and they don't just do reconstructive. They do everything and anything in between. And so a doctor could be more cosmetic, which would be basically the higher paying things. They are all elective surgeries. None of them are really covered by insurance. It's just strictly things that are meant to enhance you. When it comes to the reconstructive, it's all pretty much covered by insurance. It's not <laughs> the really money-based side of plastic surgery as well as it's very much so towards accidents that have happened or natural born deficiencies such as like plus pallets. And if you get in like a car crash, it comes with like the skin grafts and all of the trauma surgery and stuff like that. And then here are just a couple of the charts that I have about it that kind of describe the demographics and stuff of plastic surgery, which is mainly male. And usually in the mid 40s to 50s is when you get out of medical school or are actually starting to have a good practice and everything like that. And then also plastic surgery is a very big time commitment. One, you have to go through medical school, which already will take away eight years. But also, when you are a doctor, you're spending many hours with your patients a week. And that doesn't include your surgeries. That's just strictly with your patients. And that can be also a challenge when it comes to it. And some of the learning challenges I've had is that nothing was really factual based. Everything was opinions, everything didn't really provide actual information on plastic surgery, which I guess makes sense because you have to go to medical school to find out all that stuff, but at the same time it's very hard to figure out ideas for your original work. It's very hard to figure out what you should do for the actual topic, which kind of has brought me in a different direction, but we will talk about that later. And some of the progress that I've made with this is that is mainly revolving around medical school. I've learned what it takes to get into it, what's it gonna take when I'm in it, how to pass it, how to get through it, and how to become a plastic surgeon basically, and make it through the college, make it through medical school, and do the best I can. And some of the main parts of it, one is your MCAT, which is basically your SAT of medical school, which you take during your junior year of college, much like in high school, you take it your junior year. And that is one of the major parts of getting into medical school. If you don't get a good grade on that, you are very unlikely to get into medical school. And grades are also very important, but if you have the grades, I mean, it's not hard to get in, as long as you have the good MCAT. So that was kind of that. And also, on the business side of running a practice, I've kind of learned a little bit of about that just by t interviewing with people and letting them know how they run their practice. Do they advertise? Do they do magazines? Do they do TV? And really, it was all, most of them do not advertise, unless they're mainly cosmetic. And if they're cosmetic, they usually, they have their websites, which they have, they pay people for. And well, I talked to one of the surgeons, Dr. Ken Smart, and he was telling me about how he pays someone to have certain words when you search them, like plastic surgery and Frisco. If he has those certain words that come up in his little box that he's first. And so that he pays people to do that, and he pays people to run his website, and he pays people for other advertisements and magazines and newspapers and stuff like that. And that was the main part of the industry. But then you have those other doctors that are all reconstructive and do absolutely zero advertising. So it's a very large spectrum of people. And my goals over this next semester are mainly to learn more about the different aspects of plastic surgery. Is because being a plastic surgeon doesn't just happen after medical school. You go through medical school, you go through college, you go through high school. And what's going to get you to that next level in all of those different stages? And that's what I kind of want to learn right now. So in my upcoming senior year of high school, I'll be able to do what I need to do as well as learn what I'm going to need to do in college. And also I would like to know what certain things, I guess those different aspects of plastic surgery, what they need. 
and that'll come down to original work and that'll come down to final products and everything like that. And so my original work idea is basically to make a website that will encompass all the plastic surgeons in the area and that by just searching your zip code that'll kind of give you a broad spectrum of every plastic surgeon in the area and that'll include biographies on them whether it be a paragraph or whether it be a page it has all that in there and it'll have what insurance they cover it'll have how many years they've been practicing what schools they went to what surgeries they're well known for and that'll just kind of bring together the plastic surgery community I guess as well as helping people find what they need because I've been searching for plastic surgeons online and I did come across a website that I didn't really know had a lot of things on it but as I later found out it basically has every doctor known the man in it but when it came to the plastic surgery section of it it wasn't all that great it was just it took me forever to find it it was like three pages back in Google and nobody looks in that section so I was like I want to find I want to make a website that's going to come up first that's going to give you what you need and it'll have all those doctors that are pretty well rounded, I guess, or the good doctors. And it's not going to give opinions of doctors unless, which later come into my ideas as people start to pay for the product, which could happen, could not. But this website, I'm not aiming to tarnish anybody's reputation. I'm not trying to hurt anybody with their sales and their advertising and stuff like that. I'm basically just trying to give everybody a spectrum of the person and help them find the plastic surgeon that they need. And the reason I want to do this website is, is because there isn't anything like it. It's all personal websites. It's There's that one person that you find on the website and you have to keep searching through every little thing. And it's a hassle. I just want everything to be right there, make it easy, because that's what people are looking for these days. And I've researched a couple things on how websites are run and how websites are kind of organized. And it's basically <coughs> make things as simple as possible and give people the answer they want right away. And because nobody's going to go search through a website to try to find their answers. They're going to want to click a tab and have go right to it. And that's how it's just becoming these days. And when it comes to my original work and my final product, they kind of go hand in hand because the research will come with the original work and the final product will come with the actual website. But I want this to be, I don't really know how I'm going to do it yet. I still have to converse with my mentor about it. But I want to be able to get this kind of well known or get plastic surgeons kind of on board with it. And from there, I'll be able to include those plastic surgeon bios and include all their information and just be able to basically have the database of all the plastic surgeons. And hopefully, people will jump on board with it. And I'll have to talk to my mentor about that as well. And some of the long term ideas I have for this is definitely extending it beyond plastic surgery because there are definitely very prominent things that people use. They use, people always use dentists. There's always gonna be chiropractors, as well as orthopedic surgeons and other very well-known surgeons that people use frequently. And this is also what I kinda wanna expand on, is that I'll have basically a website where people can just go and they can find exactly what they need. And say you need a dentist and it's near your area and it's list every dentist that's in the area. And it lists some reviews about them, usually the good ones. And then hopefully later on, we can get a program to where you can subscribe to the website. And then anybody can leave a review, but only the ones that pay for it will be able to read them. Because then again, we're not trying to tarnish anybody's reputation. And what I want to do with this is I need to really learn the basics of creating a website. And I've never really dealt with computers. I know how to use them. I know how to manipulate them a little bit. But website making is not my, per se, greatest attribute. But hopefully I'll be able to learn more about that. 
and be able to eventually create a website that is very eye appealing, that is very useful and very easy to use for the user. And also another step that I need to take though is I need to find a way to get the surgeon's information. That's going to be the biggest issue just because it's going to be, I'll have to compile all the information. I'll have to find the plastic surgeons that are going to let me do it in the first place. And it's not just going to be in Texas. If it gets bigger, it's going to have to be everywhere. And that's going to be a lot of people to file. So I'll have to figure out that and see if I'm just going to do it as a Dallas thing, if I'm going to do it as a Texas, and then try to compile every, all the people that are there and see if they're going to send me the information what's going to happen with that. And I don't really know how I'm going to do that yet, but we'll see. And when it comes to the mentor, I need him to kind of jump on board with this. I've never really talked about it with him yet, but hopefully he'll be supportive about it. And I'm hoping to have at least, at least like a prototype of it by the end of the year. If not, like a full website, but I mean at least a prototype because then I'll have kind of the foundation for everything. And hopefully through him, I'll be able to contact other plastic surgeons or even like conventions and try to get it in there and see what they have to say about it. And that's pretty much where I'm at.